Hey, and welcome to our brand new video intercom series on Hikvision's IPPoE uh, Generation 2 intercom. So, this is our first video in a 15 part series. Uh, don't worry guys, I've made the other 14 parts already, so they're all ready to come. So don't fear, uh, we're going to be showing you how to use all these items. We've got various configurations I'm going to be going through. And there's a lot of information to learn, a lot of uh, cool things we're going to be doing. Okay, so let me just quickly show you uh, the items that we'll be using. And then I'm going to be showing you what's coming up in the series. And at the end, uh, we're going to show you um, some top tips that uh, you might want to learn before you start off. And then we're going to quickly show you a little demo of all the items uh, at the end of the first episode. So hopefully you guys uh, like the series and what's coming up. And there's a lot of information, uh, lots to do. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it and let's get started. So these are the items we'll be using. Okay, uh, the first one here is a door station. So this is a, a digital camera uh, with a push button to ring the doorbell. Okay, and this is our main module. Okay, so the, these other separate modules here, they will connect underneath here just via a simple cable that comes in the box of the, if you get the bracket, the two or three way bracket, the cables come in there. Okay, and this is a name tag module. Okay, so if you have more than one flat with separate separate uh, screens and different flats, you can call obviously flat one, flat two, flat three, up to six. Okay, and the keypad module and card reader fob module. Okay, so if you've got an automatic door, uh, many users, you can assign them a keypad or a fob reader and they can just bib in or put in the key. Uh, the pin number and you'll be able to get in okay uh, and this is obviously links to a mag lock and exit button and we even got videos later on how to sh uh, we're going to be showing you how to do that so these are the screens we're using we've got a normal screen which just runs through a cable and we have a poe wi-fi screen uh, which obviously you need to power it locally but if you've got a hard to reach location uh, the wi-fi is not much more than the normal screen it's the one we recommend and we've got these basic cheap fobs and smart cards that will uh, let the users get in you can program these i'm going to be showing you how to do that later on and all our software and all our programming we're going to be using ivms 4200 so this is a bit of software you can get from hikvision don't worry we've got um, some videos how to use it how to download it all right so let's show you what guys what's coming up okay so in our next video it's really going to be a basic one it's going to be how to download ivms activate your devices Enable DHCP, which gives it basically a, a local IP address so they can communicate, add devices to the main menu, and then be able to set the time. Okay, it's a pretty boring one, but this is the basics we have to do for all the modules and all the screens. Okay, so next video after that will be um, learning to update the firmware. Okay, it's a very important stage. If you want to do some complicated setups, it's recommended you have the latest firmware. Okay, but don't worry guys, it's really, really easy to do. Just go to our website, download the links, all ready to go. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes, uh, just do IVMS. Okay, so you'll see all the different configurations we have coming up. They're not wiring, guys. This is how you wire up the, the system. Okay, it's a bit rudimentary, the picture, I apologize, but it shows you the basic concept. So as you see, our PoE switch is basically the hub. It's the central unit where everything goes through. Okay, so... We have our, our main door station connected to our devices. That just requires one cable to the main unit and that powers everything, okay? Even a mag lock. So our mag lock and our door exit button, that all comes from the same power assigned to this unit. And we have uh, our second one connected to our second screen, third one, third screen. And this is uplink, which we connect to our internet router. So you'll be able to get the, the app on your phone. If someone's at the door when you're not there, you'll be able to see it, okay? And now, this will be our first setup, our little demo of our first setup. We'll be using IVMS. So it's just literally one doorbell, one screen. You ring the bell, the screen rings. Uh, simple as that. Okay. And then we have another setup with the uh, same setup, but you're using a Wi-Fi screen. So you just connect your door station to the IP switch. And you then uh, set up the, the, the monitor uh, through the panel itself. Okay. So it's quite simple. And this is how you can add Wi-Fi screens to any of your configurations you've got coming up. Okay, then we're going to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to just have um, a single household where it's got three screens. So you have to configure three screens for one household. And so when they ring the bell, three screens are going to ring. Okay, we've got a, a configuration here where you've got two households. And we're using a name tag station here. So obviously, the multiple 
This is the design, obviously you can add more. This is just for two, just for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna have two separate flats, but one flat has got two screens, one flat's got one screen. A little bit more trickier, but still pretty basic. And now we have three completely separate flats, all with one screen each. So you ring flat one, flat screen, uh, flat one screen is gonna ring, etc. Okay, now we add a keypad module to the unit. So this is uh, the same setup as before, three households, three separate screens, but the key, you'll be able to enter a keypad to gain access to the building. And we'll be showing you how to add a man lock and exit button as well. So this is another way to enter the building. Instead of putting in a key pin, you would use your fob and the smart cards and you just go bib and it opens up the door. Okay, and we even show you how to use uh, IVMS to add users, add the fobs. It's all done through the panel, so you can uh, just go up to the panel itself and use the fob and it'll go bib and you can you can make your own fobs, okay? It's actually very easy to do. Okay, so as you see here, we've got the keypad and the fob stations that connect to a mag lock and an exit button. So when you, when you bib in, uh, the door should open. So we've got two different setups here. So we've got the, uh, we're gonna have a video on how to set up just the mag lock. Okay, just a pretty simple configuration, and you can add yourself a simple door exit button. But we've gone for a little more, more, more complicated, no touch exit button. Uh, this is from Hikvision, and you see it's a little bit more complicated, the wiring, but it's still pretty straightforward. Okay, and then we're gonna show you how to set up the app. So if someone's, if you're, if you're not at home and someone's at the door, they ring the bell, you can let them in, or you can see who's there. Okay, and you'll be able to remove the, view the remote camera as well. Okay, and then we're gonna have a bit of fun at the end of the, the series. Um, Hitvision comes with some pretty dry ringtones for their panels. So we're gonna show you how to download ringtones from our website, or just simply create your own ringtones. It's, it's very easy. Okay, you can use uh, just any sound bites you make, just convert it. We've got a little app to convert on our website, nice and simple. And then just upload it into the panel, and then when it rings, you know, you've made your own sounds. Okay, and then the last video, we'll just be learning how to add users, edit users, update fobs, and see history logs and things like that. So this is more for the client-based. Um, you, you might want to give this to your client, just show them how to general maintenance, or if you're not too sure how to do it yourself, it's all there. Okay, so we're really at the end of our introduction now to our series coming up. Um, I'm just gonna give you a few top tips before, before you get started. And number one is, Always, always, always update the firmware and IVMS software, okay? Always make sure you've got the latest versions because sometimes it can be a bit finicky, a bit buggy. Um, and if you haven't got the latest firmware, it's hard to know what's going on because some of the complicated setups, well, you will need the latest firmware 100%, okay? We, 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 we were experimenting a few months ago, one of my colleagues, without the latest firmware, there was a, there was a lot of issues. So please update the firmware, check out our third video, a link below, obviously. Uh, it only takes a, a few minutes to update it. I made it very easy for you guys. Okay, the second top tip is make sure you set the time uh, on all the devices to the same time, okay? Always, you need to configure them constantly, okay? If you're messing around with the system especially. So make sure you, before you do any configurations, always make sure the time is always synced on all the units. And when you're setting up the units, obviously don't forget your password, very important. There'll be one password you use for the majority of stuff. Don't forget it. And don't put admin in that password. Okay, it doesn't like it because your username will be admin. Okay. Third top tip is practice, practice, practice. Okay, obviously this makes sense. This is just common sense. Um, what we recommend you do, you can just mess around at home, um, setting up the devices, configuring them on your home computer and, uh, and things like that. And so our next top tip is obviously then you can factory reset your devices and start again. So you could do different configurations. Worst comes to worst, you factory reset the devices. And, uh, it's easy to start again. You can't go wrong. And if you have the updates to the firmware, don't worry. If you reset your device, that you will still have the latest firmware. It's actually you, it's very, very, very hard to get rid of the latest firmware. Okay. And the last top tip is get familiar with IVMS 4200. Okay. This is the only software you can use to to really set it up unless you use the panel and panel that it comes with, but that's very, very limited features. So IVMS, you could do a whole host of things and you can obviously add users and this is for client based as well. The client will, will have to use this if he wants to uh, configure the system uh, post installation. 
So, we, yeah, we have a lot coming up, as you see. I hope you guys um, haven't been too put off by the amount of information. Uh, but before we finish this, our introduction, I'm just going to fl flick over to the live view and you'll be able to see some of the, uh, the items we're going to be using in the series, just physically hands-on. So I'll catch you guys in a sec. Okay then, so as you see, this is all the bits and bobs we'll be using. Okay, we'll start off with the, our main hub. Okay, nothing's powered up at the moment. Um, but as you see, it comes with an RS-485 cable. This is how you connect the module units together. Uh, it's pretty, very, very, very straightforward just to connect them together. And the second unit it becomes like um, part of the first unit. It's absorbed into the, the main, the main units. You know, information and and updates and everything. So very little configuration, things like that needed. So as you can see, they join together, and this one's got an in and an out, and you just join it to the next one. Okay, and you can have as many modules as you want. You just keep uh, adding and adding. Okay, until obviously you are limited in power, but Modules don't take up much power, so you should be okay. All right then, so then we have our screen. And I'll quickly show you a cable, obviously, this is your standard, your standard cable. All right, RJ45 Ethernet cable, and this goes in here to the main unit that powers it for MOS switch. Okay, so straightforward setup. This is a Hikvision PoE switch. It can power up to three screens and the main hub and uplink for the internet. Okay, the same with our screen. There's a little port at the back here. You just plug it in there to power it up. Very easy to use. Okay, so simple cable for data and power. Very nice. Oops, just not the camera. Uh, and then later on, we're gonna be doing some more complicated things. So we'll be setting up uh, our fobs, so fobs and card readers, so you'll be able to like bib into the building and open the maglock. And yep, we have even got a maglock here. So this is a standard maglock, off the shelf, standard configuration. Um, we'll show you inside. All, all there is is basically just a little screw here. And you can get access there. And you just, I just put in a positive and negative cable. That's how easy it is to set up a maglock, you know, wiring it up. Uh, I'm no electrician, but I managed to figure it out. Okay, and our second part of our maglock. And we have a door exit button as well. So it's a no touch one. You just put, ho hover your hand over there and it opens up the button. It opens up the door. It comes with a variety of colored cables at the back. So this is our, this is uh, the equipment we'll be using and they're going to teach you how to use all this stuff and do various configurations. So please check out the videos to come guys. I hope you enjoy them. Hope you learn something. And if you do do enjoy it and learn something, please subscribe. Feel free to ask us comments and we'll try and get back to you. And obviously if you're interested in the products, get in touch. Our details are below and we're happy to help you out. All right. So I hope you enjoy the series and I'll see you again in another video. Thanks. Bye.